Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So a while ago I made a poll asking if you were playing Elden Ring and what mechanics you'd like to see from it. Thank you for all the responses, there were lots of great ones. Although a lot of them are also more general about action or open world games rather than something specific to Elden Ring. So I do want to cover things like giant open worlds, making some melee combat, getting on and off a mountain and so on. But for this video I want something specific to Elden Ring. So one unique interesting mechanic to Elden Ring or really all of the souls likes is a backstab. If you're behind an enemy and you attack, it triggers a backstab which causes some massive damage. This one is a fun mechanic in just about any melee action game and it's actually pretty easy to do. But at the same time, if you don't know about one specific math function, then you might have no idea how to do it. So we need to figure out how to identify if the player is behind the enemy. And also very important, this involves matching two animations. So the backstab attack for the player animation and the backstab victim animation. In order to really sell the attack, we also need to make sure all of the objects are placed and rotated correctly for the animation to perfectly fit. Alright, so let's handle all of that to make a nice, simple, but really satisfying backstab mechanic. Over here I've got my simple character, I can move around. For this I'm using a bunch of visual assets just for fun. These are from the Cindy Studios Fantasy Kingdom pack. And speaking of Cindy Studios, they're actually running a massive sale on their store right now. Everything is at 50% off and a bunch of special assets at 70% off. This one, the Fantasy Kingdom, is at 70% off this week. They've got tons of packs, all of them in their gorgeous style. So whether your game is fantasy, modern, sci-fi, whether it's pirates, western, town, or really whatever is the theme of your game, you can find some great assets to really make your game shine. Also a nice bonus of buying from the Synthi store is you get both Unity and Unreal assets. So check it out with the link in the description to see everything on sale. Okay, so back to my starting scene here. I can move my character around and I can click to play a nice attack animation. Now there's an enemy standing around right here. He's just on idle. So right now if I attack him, he does not react in any way. So our goal is to implement our backstab mechanic, but naturally the backstab can only be done if we're actually behind the enemy. And for the character control that I'm using here, I'm using the one from the official Unity Free Start assets. I cover them in another video. It's great for quickly getting a character up and running super quickly. All right, so over here is my super simple player script. It's really just testing for an input, and when it does, play the attack animation. In order to play that animation, simply goes into the animator and sets a trigger. Then over here is the player animator. Now all of these nodes are from the start assets by default. The only ones that I had were these two. So there's a regular attack animation and a backstab stab animation. And then on the enemy, just has an idle animation and a take damage animation, and also the backstab victim animation. If you're not familiar with the animator and transitions, I cover them in detail in one of my lectures in my Ultimate Unity Overview course, along with 50 other Unity tools and features. We can preview the animations here, so there you go, the other one, pre-standard, then taking the damage just a little bit, and finally the backstab victim animation, so there you go, takes like that and falls to the ground. And then the player has the backstab attack animation, so there you go, just like that. So we need to essentially match the position of these two objects and play both animations so they really work correctly. Now I got all of these animations from a great animation pack. It was really perfect for making exactly Souls-like. So if you're making this type of game and you want tons of Souls-like animations, definitely look into that animation pack. Okay, so here is the basic starting point with the player just doing a simple attack. Now let's identify if the player is close enough and behind the enemy. If so, then we want to play the backstab attack animation, whereas on any other position we want to play the regular attack animation. So like I said, this is actually pretty easy. There's really only one thing you need to know, which is how do you know if you are behind a certain object? And for that, we can use the excellent math function to get the vector.product. Now, if you're a mathematician, you can just browse the Wikipedia page to learn how it all works. But if that looks a bit too complex, like it does to me, then let's look at a visual example. Over here on the player script, let's first add a reference to the enemy. So a transform just for the enemy transform so we can get the transform position. Then over here on the player script, let's drag the reference, okay. Then over here, the function that we're going to use is vector3 dot. This takes two vectors, the left hand and the right hand side. Again, I'm not a mathematician, so really don't ask me how the math works. But I do know that if we put the enemy's transform forward on the first parameter, so enemy transform dot forward. And for the second one, if we put the direction from the enemy to the player, So we can the direction from the enemy to the player. And if we get this, let's do a debug.log to see what this returns. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so there's the log. And right away, if I'm straight in front of the enemy, you can see that the dot product is very close to one. If I'm perfectly mathematically perfect in front, then it's exactly one. 
Now as I move on to the side, it goes under one. And if I'm right next, right to the side of the enemy, then the dot product is around zero. Then if I'm behind, then the dot product goes under zero. And if I'm perfectly behind, then it's exactly minus one. Also note how the dot product doesn't change if you're on left on the right side. So that one does not identify. So this is only good for testing if we are either in front, it's a positive value, or behind, we've got a negative value. All right, so based on this very basic math function, you can already see how we're going to build this. To make a backstab, we just have to calculate this, see if it's close enough to minus one, and if so, we play the backstab animation, and if not, then we play the regular attack animation. Okay, so here in the code, when we have our attack, let's calculate our dot product. So let's go up here, instead of a log, let's calculate a float for the dot. And then let's just test if it's close enough to minus one. So if the dot, now here we should not force the player to be 100% mathematically perfectly behind the enemy. We want it to be a little bit forgiving. So let's put it minus and say within minus one. So we give it a little bit of margin like 0.1. So we just have to be 90% behind the enemy. So if so, then we have a backstab. And if not, then we have a regular attack. So we're here for the animations, let's play them. Okay, so that's really it, let's test. Okay, here we are, let's go right next to the enemy and play an attack. And there you go, it does work, a regular attack. Now if I go all the way behind my attack, and there you go, got the nice backstab animation. All right, awesome. Now the next issue that we have is the distance. So if we're really far but behind the enemy and we play, there you go, it still plays the backstab. Obviously that makes no sense, so it needs to be close enough to the backstab. So that one is also a pretty easy one to handle. Now one way to handle that would be on the fine target logic, but over here on this very simple demo, we don't have any fine target logic, we just have the enemy reference directly. So for this demo, really just adding a simple distance check will do. So we just check if the vector three dot distance between this transform position, so the player and the enemy, if it is under a certain backstab distance and the player is indeed behind the enemy, then we do a backstab. If not, we do an attack. Okay, so here, if I'm from the side, the regular attack. If I go behind and close enough, there you go, nice backstab. And if I go a bit far away and I attack, and there you go, regular attack. All right, awesome, all the logic is working. Now, all we really need in order to make this backstab feel nice and impactful is just apply the victim animation. Over here on the enemy script, I've got a nice public function to play the backstab victim animation. So over here, we've got the enemy transform. Now we just need to get the component of that script. So let's just refactor this code to make this uh, enemy backstab. And then up here, we need the enemy transform. So transform for the enemy transform. Go into the backstab gravity transform. And then down here, when we play the backstab animation, let's go into the enemy backstab and we play the backstab victim animation. Okay, so with that, it should be working. Let's see. Okay, so over here, let's approach from behind and attack. And yep, it does kind of work. They both did play the correct animations, but as you can see, it does not look very good. So over here, the player is looking in that direction and the enemy is looking in that direction. So they both play the animations, but they should really be facing one another. So in order to make this look good, we need to make sure we rotate the player to face towards the enemy, and we need to position the enemy perfectly at a certain distance in front of the player. And we also obviously need to make sure the enemy is rotated in the exact same direction. Okay, so let's handle all of those. First up on the rotation, let's make sure we rotate the player towards the enemy. So over here, let's calculate a direction to the enemy. So we just grab the enemy transform, grab the position minus this position. So we've got a direction to the enemy and for handling the rotation, I've got a nice function here where I can give it a target forward so I can give the direction to the enemy. And this one is using the third person control from the star assets to handle that rotation. And then on the enemy script, again, this one is just a dummy script. This one is not a full controller. And over here, I also have a nice function to set the target forward. And really what it does is just stores the target forward and does some nice smooth lerp rotation or to rotate towards that forward. I also covered this simple method of using lerp to get some nice smooth rotation in another video. It's super basic, super quick to handle some smoothing with lerp. So we just need to call this function. So when we backstab, we complete the direction to the enemy. We rotate this one along that direction and we also go into the enemy backstab 
in order to set the target forward to make it rotate in the exact same direction. So they're both rotating perfectly in the same direction. Okay, so let's see like this. So here we are, let's go behind the enemy and press the attack. And there you go, it does rotate to face towards the enemy. And yep, there you go, it plays the animation. Both of them facing the perfect direction. All right, great. Now the next thing that we need is just the positioning. Right now, if I go behind that around this distance and I play, there you go, plays the animation, but there you go. The animation is a bit too far. So let's position the enemy. And again, I've got some simple logic on the enemy for smoothly moving to a target position. So it's really using pretty much the exact same thing. So instead of modifying the transform.forward, modifies the transform.position. So we just need to call this function. Also, one note here. In a complex game, this enemy would have some AI that would control the movement. So perhaps having another script also moving the enemy smoothly over time, perhaps that could create some conflicts. Now, if you were to have those issues, then one simple solution is really just teleport the enemy to the target victim position. You might think that it looks a bit chinky, but if you actually look at the Souls games, that's actually what they do. Since the whole thing is so fast, you really don't notice a slight teleport. So over here on the simple demo, I'm using a nice mood, but in your own games, if you have issues, just go ahead, make a nice teleport and everything will work perfectly. So, okay, I've got my nice mood movement, just need to call this function, which really means that I just need to come up with the perfect position for the animations to match perfectly. Over here, we already have the direction from the player to the enemy. So really, we just need to place the enemy on the player's position plus this direction for a certain distance. So let's go into the enemy backstab and we're going to call the function to set the force movement. So force move to a target position. And the target position will be our transform.position plus the direction to the enemy and then multiply it by whatever distance based on the animation. Now in this case, for the animation pack and the animation that I'm using here, I know that this animation matches perfectly if I put it around 0.7f. Okay, so that's it. The enemy should be perfectly positioned exactly where it makes sense for the animation, so let's test. So here I am, let's go behind the enemy, stay really far away. As long as I'm behind, place the attack, and there you go, the enemy moves a bit in order to match the animation, and yep, perfectly. All right, that's pretty awesome. So I can really attack the enemy from anywhere I want, I can be super close, and the enemy moves a bit forward in order to go the animation, perfectly matches, and looks really great. Now over here I just had a bit more polish. I added some screen shakes, some blood particles, and some animations on the enemy, so now if I do a regular attack, there you go, it looks really nice, really impactful. And for the final backstab mechanic, if I go behind the enemy, do the attack, there you go, it moves, rotates, nice screen shake, nice particles, and everything looks really awesome. So again, doing a regular attack looks pretty nice, and if I go behind, there you go, really nice, really impactful, really cool backstab animation. Okay, so with this you'll learn how to use the vector.product to identify if an object is behind another one. And you also learn how to combine both attacker and victim animations to really make an action feel powerful. Now go ahead and make your action games look awesome. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.